Hello, and thank you for joining us. I am Lilian Agbeyegbe, your friendly community health educator, and this is another episode of Your Public Health Professional and You, a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. This is Your Public Health Professional and You, a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. Your Public Health Professional and You, what's that about? Well, on Your Public Health Professional and You, we have the opportunity of talking to public health professionals who are working for your good. That's why it's Your Public Health Professional and You. We get to meet them, get to learn about what they're doing and how their work is beneficial to you, even though you might actually not come across with them directly. Today, I'm talking to the phenomenal Kara Cook. Kara is a member of the public health profession. She's a director of programs for the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environment. And she's a fascinating public health professional. I'm going to let Kara introduce herself. Kara, it's nice to have you on today. Thank you so much, Lillian. It's nice to be here. Um, yeah, I'm happy to introduce myself. So like you said, I am the director of programs for the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. And that is a nonprofit organization. Um, we focus mainly on um, working with nurses and we work solely at the intersection of human health and the environment. And so it's a, it's a really um, great opportunity to kind of bring a, a health perspective to environmental conversations. Awesome. You know, I was looking at checking you out on LinkedIn and I was like, this is a very interesting, your public health professional on you, because I almost saw like three different buckets as it were. So Kara is the nurse and she's a public health professional and she's working in the environmental issue. So tell me, did you always know you wanted to work in public health? I did not actually. So I started my career um, in nursing and I worked, um, I started out in critical care. So the IC, working in the intensive care unit. So very, very kind of completely opposite of public health. And to be honest, I, I didn't really know much about the public health field when I started nursing. Um, and really kind of what kind of got me on this path is so in the intensive care unit, I was really seeing kind of the same patients coming in with similar issues and all issues that we could be preventing. But I was working more on that acute care treatment side of things. And I always knew that I wanted to go back to um, graduate school. I didn't know why I wasn't necessarily interested in doing a PhD or getting, a, you know, being a nurse practitioner. And then I stumbled across a program at the University of Maryland in which I could do a master's in public health, as well as in community health nursing. And I always had a special interest in working in the community. Um, I didn't do, you know, public health nursing starting out of school, but I really wanted to kind of explore that aspect um, and, and start to work more upstream versus just, you know, seeing patients at the bedside and helping them in that moment when they, you know, they needed care, but really trying to have more of an impact and preventing those those people from even coming into the hospital. My master's program, and that's where I really just jumped right into public health. I absolutely loved everything I was learning about. And that's when I started learning about environmental health as part of public health. And so it was just really exciting to me that I can meld all these different areas. So my nursing degree, my public health interest, but also my my love for the environment. Awesome. That was a very fascinating journey. I want to dial back a little bit. So you were a nurse working in the ICU and treating acute care. And then you were saying all of these people coming in, there's something we can do to sort of prevent them from getting here in the first place. And that's how the public health component came in. And a lot of time I find this confusion, as it were, or lack of awareness between um, people who work in healthcare settings like hospitals and what the public health practitioner does. So you've been on both sides. Can you share some light on 
what's the difference between, you know, I, I think you've already done that, but if you could elaborate a little bit, what's the difference between somebody who's a healthcare provider and you're waiting to see the people after they've already been sick, something has already happened to them. Whereas public health goes upstream and says, okay, you don't have to come in. How how does that, how has that been for you? And what do you see that difference for the lay person on the street who doesn't even know how to make that distinction? Yeah, so it, it's definitely complex. And I, I would have to, it, it is complex be, even for people in the health field. I mean, as a nurse, I wasn't too aware of, of the many different public health programs that were available. And, and it wasn't until I went into my master's program that I was like, oh, there's a whole other field available. And so I think for me, some of the distinguishing factors are that when I'm in the hospital caring for someone, I'm caring for their specific diseases or illnesses that brought them in. And so that's very around this medically focused model. So what kind of treatments or medications or immediate care can we give? But we're not looking at what are the, the causes and factors that maybe contributed to this person having this condition? Um, and what are the factors that may be preventing them from improving their health conditions? And so when I think about public health, it's really looking at those different factors. So what's someone's economic status? What are, do they have access to to fresh fruits and vegetables in their in their community is their community safe can they afford their medications and those are all the things that public health looks to address so when we talk about upstream we're talking about let's let's address these issues that are are preventing someone from achieving optimal health before an illness occurs or to help someone better manage their condition in their community setting because the thing is we can only do so much in a hospital or healthcare facility, but with public health, we meet people where they're at. So we meet people in the community in the settings where they're most comfortable and help them ha take control over their own um, health by helping them have the resources that they need to be able to maintain health, optimal health in the community setting. Awesome. It's one of my favorite examples as it were was when I was working in the field of HIV AIDS and so the HIV patient comes to the hospital and the doctor's priority is almost okay how do we get your CD4 count you know and your viral load and that's what they're looking at and they're giving all this medication but you give the medication to somebody and you don't know what the person is homeless on the street mm -hmm. and so if they're on the street and they're supposed to take medication at certain times how will they know to take it, right? You know, and if they're on the street and they're not getting nutrition food to eat, what's the implication of that for their medication? And if they're not able to practice healthy behaviors or safe behaviors, what's the so they're getting they've gotten the medication as it were from the clinic from the healthcare provider, which is supposed to help with the medical issues like the CD4, you know, count and the viral load. But then there are all of these other factors that have implications on how well that medication is going to do. So I see, yeah, I hear you say that, you know, looking at people coming in and saying, okay, fine, we're doing all of this, but then you go to upstream prevention. But you now go to upstream prevention and you even, I, I will say, take it up a notch farther because I now see that you're talking about healthy environments. And when I think about nurses, I, I don't think about nurses knowing about healthy environment. So tell me, how how are nurses working in healthy environment? How are they doing that? Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. I know a little bit about, you know, um, asthma care and all of that, but really, Nurses, public health, and healthy environment. Tell me, what are all those intersections? How do they cross the lines, and how is that working for you? Yeah, absolutely. And Lillian, you're you're absolutely um, correct with thinking about you know that connection between nurses and the environment, and that it, in many nurses, and I think even you know other health professional, public health professionals don't necessarily make that connection between 
the environment and health. I think public health professionals probably more so than than the medically focused professionals, but there's still a, a huge gap in understanding, particularly among nurses and, and those who practice more medically focused. Um, in in our aim is to real really help increase that awareness among nurses. So thinking about um, the environment, maybe the the social environment, the the communities in which people are living. Or thinking about kind of that that broader picture and and thinking about things like climate change and and how is that impacting um, extreme heat or hurricanes and floods and and how does that affect the public's health and so those are the connections we're trying to make as we're working with nurses um, through our or the organization that I work for um, and we have nurses doing a number of things and and they're all working in in different settings. So from, you know, an acute care side, we we see more of the environmental healthcare sustainability aspect. So looking at um, waste in a healthcare facility, the food served in healthcare facilities, um, how much food is wasted. And so we have nurses who are working in, in hospital settings or healthcare facilities actually working to reduce the amount of waste that, um, either by recycling or reducing the amount of waste that needs to be incinerated, the hazardous waste, because we know that incineration has a number of pollution effects. Um, so that there's that kind of bucket of environmental health. And then there's the community health, public health side, the nurses who are, um, you know, maybe working with new moms through nurse family partnership and doing education around, um, you know, lead in the home or asthma prevention. And um, we also have, there's nurses working in health departments that are working directly with community-based organizations, um, looking at, uh, you know, things like flood preparedness or um, disaster preparedness. Also, um, uh, looking at how a community is able to respond to some environmental threats. So I mentioned, you know, the hurricanes and extreme heat. So making sure during those events that that folks have, um, you know, access to the medical supplies that they might need, that they have um, the ability to evacuate if they need to. And if they they can evacuate, but they need to leave their home, making sure we're setting up those shelters and what any of the resources that people might need to be safe in that moment. And then a lot of these um, uh, events, particularly climate related events, do have some kind of long term effects after the event. And so there's also that aspect of how as as nurses and other public health professionals, can we continue to care for the community beyond that immediate event that occurs? So awesome. Yesterday, in Montgomery County, I think in the D DC area, there was warning about tornadoes. And I, I'm hearing you talking about climate and getting medication and safety. I'm thinking about, you know, so that alert went, came to my phone as it did for a number of people or, or however they got it. And so if I'm hearing you, it's like there's some public health professional like you who's done some work that the random person who's responding to that can benefit from or will end up benefiting from. So if you if you if there's somebody out in the community who says, I, I don't know you, I don't know what you mean by saying um, you're a public health professional, I don't know what you mean by saying your work benefits me, you know, let's use that scenario and sort of hone in on how does your work as a public health practitioner benefit members of the community that you don't meet? So there's somebody in your community, what you know, what count, whatever county you are, you can say that and say, yes, this person hasn't met me and may never meet me, but here's what I'm doing that is going to be helpful to them in one way or the other. Can you share with us? Yeah, and I, I think the thing with public health professionals is why it's um, challenging to see the effect is because a lot of the work that we do on the prevention side, we, if, if we're successful, you almost never know we're there because you don't, you don't have the, the disease outcomes. Um, but one of the things I, I like to think about when I'm talking about public health is that 
if your community is healthy, in turn, you're going to be healthy. So that community connection, that that the social networks that are built, um, making sure we have, you know, um, good schools, we have resources for public, um, you know, libraries and other kind of public services are, are so critical to making sure that people are healthy. And that's all public health, right? Investing in those, those public resources, um, helps build strong communities and it also helps build community resilience and so if you have that the kind of infrastructure community infrastructure then you're going to have healthy people in a community and so when i i think about my my work in, in environmental health it it is challenging because um when folks think, when you kind of say environment, people think about, you know, trees, the forest, you know, all those natural environments. But, but what I try to communicate is that we can't, we can't take the people out of environmental health because we're, we're dependent on our planet being healthy for us to be healthy. And so it's really just kind of, um, uh, thinking about, you know, the various, um, things that we interact with on a daily basis and how can we ensure that if we are being exposed to something that could be hazardous, that we're reducing that threat or that we're, we're identifying when we've been exposed and working with a public health professional or a healthcare provider to help prevent any illness. Um, and, and it can be challenging because with environmental health, a lot of times exposure don't always translate into, um, uh, a disease outcome or anything like that. And so I think um, when we're talking about promoting healthy environments, I think when we when we can um, really make that connection for people about what in their environment means, whether that's just where they live, you know, where they go to school, um, where they work, any potential exposures that can occur there and how someone can protect themselves if that makes sense. Yes, it does, you know, and uh, so many things about healthy environment. I know when I did, um, when I was doing my master's in public health and I had to take a class in environmental health, I was like, what has that got to do with me? Um, but then learning about the heat stroke, learning about the impact on, you know, food deserts on people or having um, access. I think one of the things I, I actually worked on a project which was called Trees for Public Health, you know, and how I had no idea, but it turned out that neighborhoods that have trees, people are more likely to go for walks and going for walks is keeping exercising and making people less prone to be obese. People are more likely to drive slowly than with areas without trees where they drive very fast and so less accidents. I'm like, oh my world, who knows how much I has to, the environment has to do with public health. But when we're talking about all of this work, we can do it because there's the public health workforce. And in recent years, uh, there's been this conversation about, you know, a reduction in the public health workforce. People are not coming into the profession or people in profession are fatigued and are leaving the profession. And so um, I wanted to ask if there's somebody out there who's watching this and saying, I had no idea that I could be a nurse and be a public health practitioner, or I had no idea that I could be in public health and be working on the environment, or I had no idea I could be in public health, period. Uh, what's your word to somebody who's thinking, is this something for me or not? What would you say to somebody about considering public health as a profession? You know, the one thing I love about nursing and what I love about public health is that you could really do so many things. And, you know, nursing, I think a lot of people think, oh, working in a hospital and then public health, I think people think someone working in the health department or doing, you know, visits to, to restaurants or, you know, those more kind of environmental sanitation things. And and it it's kind of pigeon tools, public health professionals. And it, it, that's not true. We have public health professionals operating in so many settings. And, and sometimes it's kind of figuring out where your interest lies and then just 
networking with other public health professionals or, you know, reaching out to, to, different folks who you may be connected through, whether that's through um, your community, an organization that you work with, or, you know, university that you went to and just really, um, you know, find like-minded people who share share that same interest. And you'll be surprised by how many connections you can make. Um, and, and, you know, from my standpoint, public health profession, the public health infrastructure in our country has been severely underfunded. And I think that has a lot to do with um, why folks have been kind of leaving the profession, um, you know, having to to uh, work in environments where you're um, kind of doing a lot with a little funding and little staff can be very stressful. It's the same with nursing um, that we're seeing now a lot of burnout um, because of the, you know, uh, just the nature of public health. But, you know, it's really important that we have new folks coming into the profession. We really need that that energy. We really need new ideas. Um, and, and honestly, we really need those new ideas to help push us forward as a profession. And so I don't want folks to, um, you know, think that you don't have a, a place in public health if you have a, a specific interest in the environment or something else, because really you, everything is public health pretty much. And you can you can really do a whole lot, which I think is very exciting. And you really can kind of shape the career you want to have in public health. Um, so I don't I want folks to kind of be inspired and, and want to learn more about public health. Be inspired coming to public health. You can shape the career you want. There's so much that you can do. And in your answer about, you know, you can find your niche as it were. You talked about networking and collaboration. And that brings me to the Maryland Public Health Association. You are a member of the Maryland Public Health Association. What led you to join the association and how has your membership of the association been for you? Yeah, so I had a couple of colleagues who were just raving about Maryland Public Health Association. You need to join, you need, you know, need to connect with these folks. And and to be honest, when I first started working in public health, um, you know, I was connecting with nurses around the country, but not necessarily in my state um, and locally. And so when I joined Maryland Public Health Association, I was actually able to kind of expand my leadership. And I was, um, I've been on the board for Maryland Public Health Association for, I think I'm going into my fourth year now. Um, and so that's just been a really great opportunity to expand my leadership skills. And also it just gives me an opportunity to, to meet different people from around the state who are working in public health. Um, you know, the organization has an annual meeting and we have networking events and social hours and the people that I've just met met with and been able to work with have have just it's just such a welcoming group um that it's 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 just a great network to be a part of and I'm, I'm very proud of the work that we've been able to achieve I mean beyond just the time I've been with Maryland Public Health Association but I can only speak to that time I mean we have such a strong um, group that's just at, the, you know, during session advocating for legislation that has a, a huge impact in making people healthier. Um, we have a really awesome student section. I'm constantly impressed by how involved the students are. I know that I was not put, not put together when I was a student, but it's a very strong uh, student section. So just seeing their leadership and the events that they put on is very exciting. And, you know, I wish I would have found this a type of organization like this when I was a student. And um, I would just add to, you know, I think that the at least from what, what I'm seeing is the kind of early career professionals, the younger generation um, aren't being told how important it is to join a, a professional organization. And I think that's a real missed opportunity because when we think about um, who is advocating for us as a profession, that's your that's your professional organizations. And I think our affiliation with the American Public Health Association and then just our, our track record in the state. I mean, it's having an organization like Maryland Public Health Association is just so critical to make sure that, you know, 
we're having a voice, a unified voice of public health professionals. And we're also putting our voice out on issues that matter. Absolutely, absolutely interesting. And I think one of the things, yes, I, I joined the um, Public Health Association when I was doing my master's in New York. I think that's because we had some professors that were uh, members of the Public Health Association. But I was surprised when I got my first job, though, and working in a community-based organization. And um, I think what I was trying to nominate my organization for an annual award. And they were like, wait, what is this? You know, so it's like, yes, there's the need for us to integrate more with organizations that employ public health practitioners to let them know that, you know, this organization exists when people go and do an internship in such places. But like you said, we have a phenomenal student unit doing a lot of work and a lot of opportunities to network and to grow in the association. And it's really very affordable as well, would you say? Oh, yeah, it's one of the most affordable memberships I have, that's for sure. Awesome. And you, get a lot, you get a lot for the membership. You get um, the social events. You you're able to participate in the committees. It's it's well worth the money. Great, great. Kara, it's been wonderful talking to you. Let's see a public health professional and you. What we're trying to do is to humanize the face of public health. Let people meet the public health professionals, and also encourage people to join the public health workforce and of course the Maryland Public Health Association. We sort of covered all of that in our conversation, but I wanted to leave room for you. Is there anything that you'd like to tell us we haven't spoken about just yet? I just want to put in uh, another plug for joining Maryland Public Health Association. I'm we're uh I well, until so we have some really exciting work we're doing around climate change and health, and we always love new um, folks uh, coming into that in that space and, and getting more comfortable in advocacy roles. I would also add our our board, as well as many of our very active members, are so welcoming and happy to answer any questions if folks have you know questions about becoming a public health professional or or want to learn more about what we do as an organization, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're, we're always happy to talk to new folks. Awesome. Kara, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Lillian Agwegwe, your friendly community health educator. Another episode of your public health professional and you, this is a news magazine program of the Maryland Public Health Association. We are inviting you to join the association if you are a public health practitioner in the Maryland area. You can find more information about us, www.mdph.org. We are affiliated with the American Public Health Association, so no, we're not running this on our own. We do have a student wing. If you're a student, you can join us as well. And if you're thinking about Hmm, public health, what's that about? Join us and ask questions. We can tell you some more. And until I come your way again on another episode, thank you, Kara, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Great. And I'll see you some other time. Thank you and bye.